Forget the glamorous tales of Roman emperors and gladiators. Behind the marble columns and togas, Rome had a thriving underground economy that catered to every desire, led by none other than the savvy pimps of the ancient world. Yeah, that's right. Let's dive into the surprisingly organized world of Roman pimping, where products, services, and working girls were Rome's hottest commodities. From lavish brothels near the Colosseum to private encounters for the rich and powerful, the trade of services and products, shall we say, was alive and well. In ancient Rome, prostitution wasn't just tolerated, it was an accepted part of life. Working girls weren't shamed the way they would be in other cultures. These women played a crucial economic role, and the Lenones knew exactly how to keep their business booming. Like the merchants of today, pimps had a product to sell, and they made sure it was in high demand. Services were treated like any other product. Working girls were categorized by their status, beauty, and skill set, with different tiers available depending on how much a client could pay. It's been said that even the Roman tax collectors got in on the action, as the state imposed taxes on brothels and certain services. Talk about revenue. A standard working girl might serve common citizens and soldiers, while high-ranking senators and wealthy merchants indulged in only the most elite services. The higher the class, the higher the cost, and the pimps knew how to upsell based on exclusivity. Everything from the location to the quality of the entertainment was designed to cater to their clients' pocket and fantasies. Brothels in Rome weren't even hidden. Sometimes they were attached to taverns or bakeries, making it easy to indulge after grabbing a loaf of bread or a jug of wine. Some places were so sophisticated they had different rooms themed around exotic fantasies. Think of walking into a wine bar just with a secret menu. For pimps, it wasn't just about providing women. It was about catering to an entire experience. They understood their customers wanted discretion and ambience, and they mastered the art of blending these elements. Marketing tactics of the day were not unlike modern advertising. Graffiti and suggestive murals outside certain establishments were the equivalent of modern billboards, drawing in potential customers. The working girls themselves came from all walks of life, slaves, freed women, sometimes women who found themselves in debt. They weren't necessarily powerless, though. Some earned enough to eventually buy their freedom or even become Lenones themselves, managing their own businesses. We'd call them madams at a brothel now. The most skilled were more than just workers. They became fixtures in elite social circles, valued for their companionship and wit, often mixing with Rome's upper echelons. And pimps being the ever-savvy and morally dubious businessmen that they are, capitalized on their working girls' uniqueness. Blonde Gauls? Check. Exotic Egyptians? Got it. The diversity of the Roman Empire meant a diversity of services and clientele, and Lenones were there to make the match. And these pimps, just like modern-day businessmen, were always looking to diversify their product. Women weren't the only commodity. Love potions, charms, and even aphrodisiac foods were sold by Lenones to enhance the experience. The idea was that everything was part of the package. The more a customer spent, the better the entire fantasy was. Rome's marketplace for pleasure was more diverse than any bazaar. While some may view the trade as debauchery, it's clear that Rome's Lenones ran a tight, business-savvy ship. They weren't just peddling women. They were marketing luxury, escapism, and desires fulfilled. And much like today, the economy of satisfaction was always booming. While Caesar was busy conquering Gaul, these streetwise entrepreneurs were running the most lucrative business in town, the oldest profession in history. But like all empires, the pimp game in Rome wasn't destined to last forever. As the empire began to crumble, so did the once thriving brothel industry. When the Goths came knocking, it wasn't just senators running for the hills. It was also the pimps and their crews who packed up their shops. Rome's decline meant fewer clients, more chaos, and new religious orders that didn't quite vibe with the whole legal prostitution thing. Christianity's rise meant fewer toga parties and a lot more repentance. And let's be real, telling a group of pimps to turn the other cheek probably didn't go over too well. By the end of Rome's glory days, the Lenones were little more than a footnote in history. But their legacy? Oh, it's still alive and well today. So what can we learn from the pimps of ancient Rome? Well, Hustling has always been about adapting to the market. Whether you're selling wine or wheat or other services, the game doesn't change. 
And the spiritual descendants of these pimps are alive and well today. They've been mob bosses. They've been strip club owners. Hell, there's probably a few of them hucking NFTs. Either way, the hustle never dies. Remember, people, history isn't just about battles and politics. It's about the everyday grind. And if you ever find yourself in ancient Rome, just keep an eye open for the real entrepreneurs. So the next time you think of ancient Rome, don't just picture grand forums and mighty emperors. Remember the pimps, the working girls, and the thriving trade of services that helped build Rome's robust economy. Because in the end, not all roads in Rome lead to glory. Some lead to pleasure. I've been Drex Hawkins. Thank you very much for watching. Stay pimping, my friends. There's a scene in The Sopranos where a guy asks Tony where the Romans are now, and all he says is you're looking at them. This is one of my favorite shows of all time and my all-time favorite cast of actors. I have no way of doing it, but if they were all still alive and I could, I would love to pitch to HBO a series called Pimps in Rome.